my buddies. Welcome to a video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Today I'll share with you how to clean the Roll Rock S8 Pro Ultra and also provide some cleaning and maintenance tips. Time to give Thomas Choo Choo his spa treatment since he's been so good with his weekly chores. Let's go. Just kidding. We wouldn't want to drown Thomas Choo Choo because that'd be unproductive since he's such a great worker. Plus during your setup, you've probably seen a cautionary screen to not use the robot to clean sharp debris, do not vacuum very wet floors, and don't wash the robot with running water. You know, the common sense stuff. So I was so surprised that I was able to disassemble quite a few pieces from the S8 Pro Ultra. Maybe it's that way with other vacuum robots as well, not sure really since this is our first robot vacuum. A lot of people don't talk about this, but the robot vacuum will be disgusting if you accidentally clean spots that are too sticky beyond its cleaning capability. Or if you like me and made a mess for testing and tortured the poor guy through it. Sorry my dude. So having the ability to disassemble pieces of the robot is so helpful to really clean the robot if things get stuck or sticky. I did a test on some of the different modes of this robot, which I share more details during my review of the fella, but be warned, the review is a tad long. Okay, maybe more than a tad. And the results of the test were not very pretty at all. Look how gross things turned out to be afterward. Anyway, I was able to disassemble the main brushes, side brush, mop cloth, and the omnidirectional wheel. To remove the main brush, first take off the cover using the latches. Once you take out the main brushes, pull out the main brush caps to remove any tangled strands of hair or fur. You can easily remove the side brush by unscrewing the middle screw. Next, the mop cloth is attached to the mount with some Velcro strip. Lift it off to detach, then slide it out from the mount and Roborock recommends replacing the mop cloth every three to six months. Although the Roborock app can tell you the life of a lot of parts of the robot under the maintenance section, the mop and dust bag are two parts that unfortunately don't have these readings. Anyway, the omnidirectional wheel can also be detached by using a small screwdriver and prying out the axle. And to reassemble, you just put everything back the same way you take them out. And from the top of the robot, you can take out the internal dustbin to wash it if it gets too dirty. Unfortunately, the main wheels cannot be removed, so cleaning them is a lot more tedious. I had to wipe the grooves one by one and use Q-tips and toothpicks to pick at the corners. The reason why you should keep your robot clean is because it will transfer to the dock and all over your home. Just imagine these sticky wheels and brushes cleaning your floor, rugs, or carpets. I don't know about you, but that's way too gross to even think about. So besides cleaning the robot, I'd recommend you clean the dock as well. You can disassemble the dock base, but don't pull directly out because you might break the base. The water filter mesh and the high speed maintenance brush can also be removed. To remove the filter mesh, unlock it and remove it from the dock. Unlock the filter latch and rinse the filter clean. And don't forget to wipe the spot where the mesh sits, then reinstall the filter mesh once it's dried. As for the high speed maintenance brush, you need to lift the latch to remove it. Remove any entangled object on the high speed maintenance brush and rinse it clean. Then reinstall the brush and latch it in place. And that's how I disassembled the pieces of this robot to really clean it. Ask Thomas Choo Choo how he liked his bar treatment. Next, let me share with you some cleaning and maintenance tips in no particular order. It's whatever order I wrote them down in. The first tip is more of a preventative than maintenance. As I previously shared in my review video, the SA Pro Ultra is not good at cleaning sticky messes especially medium to large size. If it's a dime size drop, then maybe it's no big deal, but I wouldn't take the chance to be honest because cleaning up after the robot and his little garage is very time consuming, while doing a quick wipe before the robot starts is way quicker and prevents more headaches later on. Has your robot cleaned a mess and it turned out to give you more work? Let me know down below. 
Another option is you can set a no-go zone to prevent the robot from cleaning a particular space and clean up manually after it if you don't have time at the moment. The second tip is to pick up things off of the ground before the robot does its clean. The robot does do a good job of avoiding objects, but if you want the floor to be well cleaned, then keep the floor object free as much as possible. It's worth noting that small and short objects don't get registered with the sensors very well or at all. So the robot doesn't realize that there's something there and the objects do get sucked up. The reason is because the objects are shorter than what the sensors can sense, which is why this happened to small and short objects like mini toy cars, Lego pieces, thumb drives, and others. Now, you don't have to dump the dirty liquid out after every clean and can definitely wait till the dirty water tank is full, but I would highly recommend you do because there will be gunk collecting at the bottom of the bin, which will smell after a while, especially if it's a big mess. I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in opening the tank and inhaling its fermentation. So I've been dumping out the dirty liquid after each clean, doing a quick rinse and leaving the bin open to air dry. Consider cleaning the dustbin when replacing the disposable dust bag. Start by lifting the dustbin and removing the bag vertically. It's worth noting that pulling the dust bag handle to remove the bag will seal the bag to prevent leakage. Discard the dust bag and clean around the filter with a dry cloth. Slot in a new disposable dust bag, slide until it reaches the bottom of the slot and reinstall the dustbin securely. Please always install a dust bag before putting back the dustbin lid to avoid auto emptying without the bag. You can also disable the auto emptying on the Roborock app if you haven't installed a dust bag because it will be a mess if you left it without a bag and auto emptying is enabled. As for how often you replace your dust bag is relative to your environment. If you have kids or pets, you will definitely need to replace the dust bags more often than me since I don't have kids or pets. The dustbin doesn't have a way to indicate when the dust bag is full for replacement, which is really unfortunate probably due to a patent conflict since iRobot has a patent on this. However, you can estimate based on your average fill of your vacuum's canister and determine the accumulation based on the size of the dust bag. For example, let's just say theoretically that our Shark Navigator vacuum dust cup is three quarts. It takes us three weeks to fill the vacuum after cleaning the entire house. So if we take the volume of the canister and divide it by the three weeks, we have one quart per week. That's how much dirt and hair fill up per week. Now the dust bag that I have is three liters and one liter is 1.06 quarts. So that means that the bag should be sufficient for three weeks with my one quart per week calculation. My next tip is also a Roborock's recommendation, which is to clean the air duct as required. In case you're wondering, this is the air duct. I don't think you have to clean this weekly or even monthly, maybe every six months or maybe even annually. But of course, it's all relative to your environment. However, I think that if the dirt in the internal dustbin is not being sucked up into the duct's dust bag completely like normal, then you may want to clean the air duct. To do this, remove the clean water tank, dirty water tank, dustbin, and obviously the robot vacuum. Disassemble the dock base and check for any blockage. Again, pull it lightly upward to disassemble. Then clean the air inlet with a cotton swab if it gets blocked and wipe it with a dry cloth. Carefully place the dock upside down on a hard floor cover with a soft towel Unscrew the three screws and remove the cover. Wipe the air duct and duct cover with a dry cloth. Then reinstall the cover and screw it back in place. My last recommendation is to leave all the robot's parts out to dry before putting them back after washing them clean because, well, at least for me, I want to have a double take on them before putting them back, ensuring that they are clean. 
Anyway, do you have any tips that you would like to share or recommend to me on how to maintain or keep your robot clean? Would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you again for watching this video. Have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye.